Okay, let's share our stories. It's important that we write these stories. It's not just for fun, okay? And what these stories are gonna help us ex understand are what's up with this guy and what's this guy all about, okay? Very, very important. Alex? Um, I said you need 20, $21 to buy a video game. Okay. And then you put uh, nine in the X space. Okay, the problem is though, I'm not wanting you to solve the equation, tell me what numbers to plug in. I want a situation that fits this equation, right? And this equation has two things that can change, right? You see the difference there? I want your story to have two different things that can change, all right? Kids. A yo yo, a yo yo costs. Two times the amount of the Xbox erases. Um, plus three more dollars. How much does the yo-yo cost? Okay, sure, that's an equation. Uh, let's see, this is a two times the eraser plus three dollars. Okay, then I should say the Xbox and the yo-yo. All right. Other ones, and I want to see if I have any stories out there that are not just um, like static. Static means it's not changing, right? So the yo-yo. I mean, there is there's some change there. Like, like the the Xbox eraser could cost this much, and then the yo-yo would cost this much, and if I change the Xbox eraser, I get a uh, different yo-yo <coughs> price, right? <coughs> Let's see what other people have. Uh, actually, let me go with um, Josie. Josie first. Um, okay. You're buying two TVs. They cost the same, but you don't know how much they cost together. You also have to pay three dollars in tax. Why is your total payment rate an equation to get Y? Okay. Another kind of a static e example. You know, I've got some TVs. I got some total cost. With some tax. <coughs> I two TVs. Uh, Dan wants to buy a toy for a Y amount of dollars. He does small chores around the house and earns X amount of dollars for each chore. He doubles his money if he does the chores well, and his parents say they will put in $3 to help him pay for the chore. Okay, now we're kind of getting to what I'm talking about. So let me see if I understand. He gets X per chore, X dollars per chore. I think I should change the uh, X to how many chores he does. Because uh, if he does the chores well, uh -huh. then he multiplies them. It's pretty much multiplying the amount of chores you do. Mm -hmm. And then that would be cool. Okay, so let's work with Sean's story. Okay, so Sean's story is he wants to, he wants to buy what? A toy. So buy something for some amount. We're not sure what it is. Okay, so let's maybe could we just generalize and say he wants to earn some money. Yeah. Just earn some money. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, let's say that this would be then the amount of money earned. Sorry, that's the way that I write. Uh, Sean, you said you would you you're thinking you're gonna change the x to be what? Uh, the number of chores he did. Number of chores. Okay, somebody besides Sean. If this represents the total amount of money that, what's the person's name? Dan. Dan, that Dan wants to earn, and this represents the number of chores, can someone tell me, Sean, what that two would be, Johnny? Oh, it would be two times if he gets it, if he does it Two times the amount. Two times, so you take the number of chores, you multiply it by two. If he does it so Sean, that, would you agree that, that that's what that two should represent? It's saying he earns more money. So, like, the parents will pay him more when he... Well, let's think about this. If I take a number of chores, let's say he does uh, seven chores, okay? Yeah. Seven chores. 
That's in the units of chores. We multiply it by two. And we get what, two what? Two dollars? We didn't really say two dollars, right? We said two, like just multiply by two. It doubles if he does it well. See what I'm saying? Like there's no dollar amount really mentioned. Jump. Maybe instead of X after the number of chores, maybe we could put like how much he gets in a week. How much money he gets in a week. We could do that. But to force you to learn what I'm trying to teach you, I'm going to keep X as the number of chores. And let's try to make sense of this too. The number of chores fits our needs well. If this is the number of chores, how are we going to turn chores into dollars? Blake? He gets $2 for every chore he does. Do you see the thing there? There's like an exchange. There's dollars per chore. Yeah. Right? That's what we call a rate. You understand? A rate. What are some rates? Examples of rates. Just out in the world, people abide by, Sean. Miles per hour. Miles per hour, a speed, right? A velocity, that's a rate. What's another rate? John? $15 per hour. Dollars per hour, a wage, that's a kind of a rate. John again? Uh, uh, 40 kilometers per second. 40 kilometers per second, another speed, velocity, but in different units. How about inches per year? Is that a rate? Yeah. yeah. Is it a weird one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do things move in a matter of inches per year? Yeah. Like what? Uh, yes? Glaciers. Glaciers move inches per year. Yeah. Tectonic plates. Tectonic plates. You guys are smarter than me. Blake? I just got to say that. The moon? The moon. Yeah, the moon, moon's moving away from the Earth. I think it's like four inches per year or something like that. Kind of crazy amount. Yeah? Um, uh, some rocks in the desert, the magnetic pole makes them roll around. Rocks in the desert, the yeah, the scooting rocks, the little trail behind them. Uh, the tectonic plates are causing Hawaii to move, I think, toward Japan very, very slowly, a few inches a year. Okay, so these are all rates, and notice they all have this in common, something per something, right? Miles per hour, kilometers per second, inches per year, dollars per hour, we have all of these Rates is something per something. Every time something happens, every time a year goes by, a second goes by, an hour goes by, we get, we gain something else, right? We gain a year, and at the same time we gain four inches. We gain an hour, and we also gain fifteen dollars. You see what I'm saying? Every time an hour goes by, what's that? I guess it depends. On. So every time an hour goes by, right? Every time an hour goes by, we get fifteen dollars. Something goes by, we get 40 kilometers. Every time an hour goes by, we get 45 miles. Every time, you see what I'm saying? Okay. So rates. So this is a rate. And what is this rate? Specifically for this problem, Josie. Dollars per chore. Two dollars per chore. Two dollars per chore. So if we change the two to two dollars per chore. With that, we literally get chores divided by chores, okay, the units, chores divided by chores, and what's anything divided by itself? One. 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 So we're just left with two dollars times seven, right? Fourteen. One example, because I made X be seven. Okay, so we get fourteen. Okay, so here's the story. Dan wants to earn some money. His parents will pay him two dollars per chore for X number of chores. And what's this about? Just three extra dollars, right? We're just a one-time thing. Parents give them three dollars just for nothing. Okay? So the thing, the big thing here that I want you to see is this guy right here. Oftentimes, when we're talking about these linear equations, since these two variables can change, like they can be anything, this is a rate. Okay? This guy is a rate. Okay? Uh, let's see. What's the best use of this? What time does this class get out today during advisory? 31. 31? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's write some more stories. Okay. I want you to write a few stories. And I want you to be like this. I want you to involve a rate, a something for something. Okay. Let me write a few equations up here. Y equals 5x plus 
seven y equals x minus two y equals negative. Here's a bit of a trick one. Three x plus nine. Okay. Uh, let's have this one involve money. And this one involve distance. And this one involve. Um, a story about this first equation. We already had Sean's stories. It was a good one. Anybody have another one? Sean. Looking for somebody other than the usual. I see a lot of usuals raising their hands. I'll take what I can get. I'll go with the usual. Alex? Um, so you at your job, you earn four dollars every five hours. You're we're on this one. Yeah. Four dollars every five hours. Okay. And then you go to your parents' house, and they give you seven dollars. So how seven. much money do you have? Four dollars um, every five hours. So yeah. how'd you decide on the four dollars every five hours? Well, because like x could be a four dollars, and then times five. Yeah, that kind of locks it in, though, doesn't it? I mean, you, you're you're stuck on just having four dollars and just working for five hours. Or you could do like four dollars per hour. You do four dollars every hour. Four dollars every hour for five hours. For five hours, yeah. Okay, but still mentioning that four and saying that, that this is the four dollars an hour, that kind of doesn't allow this equation to change at all doesn't allow this x to be different than 4. We can change it a little bit, though. right? What could we change so that like, maybe this could be anything, not just 4, but we involve a, y? a rate. Oh. Kind of a rate that we involve. I'm not sure. OK, uh, Johnny? Uh, so I guess $5 per hour. What do you think about that, Alex? $5 an hour? $5 an hour? If this represented the five dollars per hour, then Alex, what would X represent? How many dollars you get? How many dollars you get? Yeah. How many hours that? Okay. How many hours? Let's see. Five dollars an hour. If I were to work, let's set up a little table over here. So X represents maybe the number of hours. That's what we're saying. Y would be the total amount of money that we have. So if I work for one hour, right, then how would I calculate how much money I have? Times by five. Times by five. Five times one. And? Five. That's it? Why? Can we have some more money coming? Oh, we have seven dollars from uh, mom and dad. Okay, and so we have a total of What about for two hours? How do we calculate that? Five times two plus seven. Seventeen. What do you think, Alex? Does that sound good? Yeah. Five dollars an hour. X is the number of hours, right? You've done that kind of calculation in your head before, right? So if I work this many hours, I do this many chores, I don't know how much money you guys are making these days, but uh, yeah. if you've ever made a rate of money, like per hour or per chore or whatever, well, if I make five dollars an hour and I work for twelve hours, five times twelve, sixty dollars. Right? Catching my drift there. Okay. Let's talk about this guy distance. Four x minus two. Yes. Um. Um. Every. Every hour you, well, when you driving in your job. It's kind of hard. These stories sometimes just sound silly. 
but it, has, it helps us wrap our head around what these these kinds of functions actually do. Grady? Um, maybe like Kevin walks four miles for every hour. Um, four miles every hour? And okay. one time he took a detour and it was minus two miles. Yes. So somehow he lost two miles. Yeah. Okay. So here we have a four, I'm assuming you're referring to this four here, mm -hmm. miles per hour. You see how this five dollars per hour, five miles per hour. Right? It doesn't have to be hour, it doesn't have to be miles, it can be feet per second, but whatever. Four miles an hour, that's pretty brisk walk. Walking pretty fast, okay? For a walk, not for a run, but for walking, that's pretty fast. Uh, so, yeah, it's not a very fast. And then there has to be some kind of a thing in the story where, who, what was his name? Kevin. Kevin, where Kevin just like gets knocked back two miles for some reason, right? <laughs> he just lost two miles, Johnny? Or you can have it so the four is um, how many, how long he's had been walking, and then That much what? When he starts, like when he's taking a detour, when he's trying to get to his thing, if uh -huh. he just took his normal route, it, when he went on the detour, it took him two less hours. Um, is that, when you change that four, was that four still some kind of a rate? Yeah. If, if I understood it right, it sounds like you just said it's the number of hours. Oh, you've been walking. Number of hours you've been walking. And then the X is how many miles. So I would take this four hours, I guess? How many miles? Never. So the four would be how many how many hours you've walked, and then the X would be how many miles you've walked per hour. So then X becomes your speed, and four becomes the number of hours that you walk. Yes. So we could do that. Um, he's going to walk for four hours, and depending on how fast he walks, Hmm. I'd like to keep this at miles per hour. I'd like to keep this number at a rate. Keep that as a rate. Not that if that couldn't work. I just want to keep our heads in a, in a similar space to what we're going to usually see. We're going to see that this is some kind of a rate of change. Right? Something that's changing. We, don't, we want it to be able to show a change. Okay, so how would you describe that minus two there? Um, I would describe it as, um, well, since you're taking away the Okay, so let's talk about what this two even is. Is this two miles, two hours, two what? Miles. Two miles. It is two miles. Very good. Very good. It's two miles. Because we're walking a mount, an amount, right? Uh, if I work at four, walk at four miles an hour for X hours, I'll go a certain distance. Right? So you go faster. You go faster? He's not going to go any faster, is he? He's just going to walk four miles an hour. Time you look at him, how fast is he going? Four miles an hour. Four miles an hour. Miles an hour. Miles an hour. How about this? How about this for the, the minus two? Let's say that y, y is some kind of a distance, some kind of miles, right? Let's say this is the number of miles past his house, okay? And by past, I mean like east of, all right? So let's say that that heater over there, the windows there, that's like his house. And I'm Kevin, and I'm over here, and I want to be over there. I guess I'd be walking north if I walked that way. So let's say we're measuring how far north I am of my house. I'm not at my house, right? And I'm not, quote, past my house, am I? Where am I? I'm over here. I'm away from it in the, the, the opposite direction of where I want to be, right? I want to walk that way. I want to get past my house. How far would you? I think I'm suggesting that I would have to walk just to get to my house. Two miles. Two miles. Just imagine that he's, he, like, where he wants to start, his starting place is over there. He's not even at his starting place yet, right? He has to get there first. Right? He starts at two miles back. 
So he walks at four miles an hour, and he gets to his house, which is two miles away. And now he's there, right? Now he's like at a zero distance, because the house is the reference point. And then we keep walking north, and then we can measure how far north we are of our house, or Kevin's house, after a while, right? So he's walking four miles an hour, and he starts out two miles you know, backwards from where he wants to go. Can I see a hand? So okay, four miles an hour, but starts out two miles behind where he wants to start. What if I added two? What could that represent? Okay. So two miles away from like what his reference point is, right? He's, so he's already two miles down that direction. Like he started out ahead of the game. Right? He's already two miles north of his house. He wants to be north. He keeps walking north, right? So he started at two, and now he's going to keep going, right? Okay. And um, what do you have for us, Sean? The last one. Does anybody else have it? Because Sean is he, he always pulls a lot of weight in his class. Is there anybody who's got a story for the last one? Okay, John, what do you say? Uh, Paul is exercising, and he, he loses three pounds every week. Uh, one week, he completely loses it, and eats a bunch of fat foods and gains nine pounds. Very good story. Right? So, why... How, like, so this is a negative in front, right? So how does Sean explain the negative? He loses three pounds. Losing, right? And, and it's good. Well, we hope it's good. Maybe we hope he's not obsessed with losing weight or something. But, you know, trying to get healthy, trying to lose some weight. He's losing three pounds a week, right? So pounds per week. So what would X represent? Weeks. 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 How many weeks have gone by? All right. And what does this nine represent? He gains nine pounds of candy. Uh, so just like oh, just, so that nine is just like it doesn't happen consistently, right? For every week that goes by, it just happened. It just happened once, right? So he loses it and he just gains some weight one time. Pretty good. I like how you're matching up those units, right? This is a weight plus, this is a weight, this is miles plus, this is miles. Right? And I get confused between this is miles and we're adding on hours. We wouldn't do that. This is miles, this is miles, this is pounds, this is pounds. Um, very good. So that negative there means we have a negative rate. We can have negative rates by losing pounds. We can have negative, like what? How would I have a negative rate if, if that rate is a speed? How do we have a negative speed? Walking backwards, right? Because if I face that way, that's naturally my positive distance, so I'm losing distance. I walk backwards, I drive in reverse. How about money? How can we have a negative rate for money? Negative rate for money. Monica? How can we lose money? Well, would that be a rate? Someone robs you, would that be like, would that change steadily, <coughs> predictably over time? It'd be that. Or would it just happen once? It'd be like that plus It'd be nine. like that plus nine or whatever. Monica, how could we lose money like on a consistent basis? It falls out of your pocket. It's just you fall and fall and fall. We're looking for a rate, right? A negative loss that happens predictably. Just every hour, you just keep losing money, losing money, losing money. Blake? Taxes, okay, we could lose uh, some dollars per year, because usually taxes are every year, but yeah, that's a fairly predictable thing, okay? Or taxes could be, well, yeah, I mean, that, that works. Uh, John? Gas money. Gas money, yeah, we have to use up, we, we use gas all the time, we have to pay money, so every week I lose some amount of money to paying for gas. Not a bad thing, you get gas out of the deal, right, Josie? Investing in a terrible company. Okay, stocks. you buy stocks and they just, they just do poorly over time. Yeah? Or like paying bills? Yeah, some kind of a recurring uh, cost to you, the like rent or mortgage or whatever it, you know, whatever your bills are. They're predictable. They happen. How often do your bills happen probably? 
Every month. Probably every month, ready? Right? Maybe like that took a wallet out like, every like, day or week and you paid three dollars back. Okay, so you got you got a payment, you got a bill. Chuck? Uh if you're if you have zero amount of dollars in your bank account and you keep withdrawing, you're you're in debt. Okay. We just keep we keep taking money out, yeah. taking money out, taking money out. Very good. Okay. So we have those negative rates of money. We're losing money. We're paying for something. We're investing poorly. We have a loan we have to pay off. Okay. All right. Here's what, here's what I want you to do. Here's a couple of examples. Uh, I already started for you for this first example. All right. I want you to graph each of these. Every one of these as they look. Actually, I'm going to change this one back to a minus the way it started. Minus two. How much points do you want us to do for each one? That's part of the thing. That, that's I try to I always try to get you guys to think that's part of the thinking. How many points do you need? That's you decide. You decide how many points you need before you know what the graph's gonna look like. Okay? And it brings up a good point. Find some points. That's a pretty important part of graphing. Okay, once you think you have an idea of what the graph would look like, then we draw all of the infinite number of points that remain, right? That's otherwise known as connecting the dots in a way, right? Making our guess where the rest of the points would be. Okay, and each one just start finding some points when you think, feel like, I know what this graph would look like, I know where all the points are going to wind up being, then draw the rest of it. Okay? Not quite time to go. You got time to copy down that assignment there. Good day. Good discussion.